Just some revision pointers for the assessment on Wednesday, uh, capacitors and diodes. First thing you need to understand is the factors affecting the capacitance of a capacitor, so how good the capacitor is. And the three things are area of the plates, distance between the plates, and the relative permittivity of the dielectric. You need to understand that if the area of the plates goes up, the capacitance goes up. If the distance between the plates gets bigger, then the capacitance goes down. If the relative permittivity of the dielectric goes up, so if we go from air to say paper, then the capacitance will go up. You need to be able to calculate charge on a capacitor. And charge Q is C times V. So this is an example from the previous video. There's our formula, Q equals C times V. You need to be able to take into account the micro. So we've got 200 microfarads there, which is times 10 to the minus 6. You need to be able to change this figure, 0 0.004, into the nearest scientific um, annotation. So it's milli. That's 4 milli coulombs. This is arguably equally, equally correct, 0 0.004 coulombs, but 4 milli coulombs is the ideal answer. So take into account 10 to the minus 6, change the units to millis or micro or whatever's appropriate. You need to be able to calculate capacitors in parallel. So in parallel, they act like resistors in series, and we just add the values. This is because we're adding the plate size. If you look here, these capacitors' plates will add together there and there. And this capacitor, the overall capacitance, will be three times this capacitor if these are the same value. So in parallel, just add them. In series, you need to use the 1 over x or the x to the minus 1 button on your calculator. So the value of the capac capacitance is going to go down in the same way that resistors in parallel, it goes down. And the answer to the ones in series can't be any bigger than any one of those capacitors. You need to be able to calculate the total capacitance for capacitors in series and parallel together. So if we've got two in parallel, we just add them and then we use that answer to work out the series uh, capacitance with the third one. You need to know the charge and discharge curves for a capacitor. So I'm not too worried about you knowing all of those words there. You need to know the general shape. You need to be able to put time across the bottom there. And you need to show quite a steep rise for that first time constant. If you want to put figures in there, I'm okay. If not, just, just volts. So volts and time across the bottom. But you must get that general shape and label all the axes. You need to do it for the charging current, which we know is going to come down. So it comes down steeply from a maximum and takes five time constants to charge. So again, you can just have current and time. Discharge voltage is going to come down. There's our five time constants. There's our voltage coming down steeply in the first time constant and then tapering off until it gets to near zero at 5T. Discharge current is going to look very similar. We're going to have current on the axis here. We're going to have time again here. And we're going to have a sharp decrease and then a tapering off. You need to be able to draw the characteristics of a diode. So this is the small signal diode. Here's our turn-on voltage, 0.3. Equally correct would be 0.7 or 0.6 or 0.8, so around that region for the diode to turn on, and then we get almost full current. We need to label the, the axis as our forward current, a reverse current, reverse breakdown. This is our forward bias, and this is our reverse bias. And this small signal diode is going to break down at about 75 volts, so it could equally be about 100 volts. The Zener diode is almost similar to the um, normal uh, signal diode in forward bias. So there's our turn on voltage there of 0.5. Again, that could be 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.6 around that region. Slightly smaller current, but a Zener could take 
100 milliamps, so it would be correct if you labelled that 100 milliamps, the same as the, the signal diode. The difference with the Zener is this turn on voltage when it's in reverse. So this is a 5.6 Zener. Again, this could be a 10 volt Zener, 12 volt Zener, even as low as 3 volt Zener. So I'm looking for a voltage here. It's a low voltage where the Zener turns on in reverse bias. So you must be able to label these graphs with all these, these titles. All the bridge rectifiers were important, but the, uh, the four-way bridge is, is the, the most widely used. So you need to be able to draw this, this diagram. You need to be able to get these diodes in the right direction, so that when it's positive, we get a forward bias through diode 1 and diode 3. And when it's negative, we get through diode 2, through the load the same way, and diode 4. So we get AC input and we get DC full wave output. And you need to annotate that with 12 volts and 1 amp flowing there. And a brief explanation of, of what's happening.